And thank you all for being here at 10.30 on Monday morning. Um, I think the most important uh, warning that I gave yesterday at yesterday afternoon's briefing is that uh, once this storm got into the Gulf, uh, a lot could change. And as is often the case, over the last 18 hours, a lot has changed. Uh, we spoke yesterday about the most likely scenario being that this storm hit landfall around Port Sulphur, Louisiana. At this point, uh, we see this storm is currently approximately 200 miles southeast of New Orleans. It has slowed considerably from uh, approximately moving at 12 miles an hour to closer to 8 miles an hour. And therefore, at this time, uh, the course of the storm has, or the projection of the course of the storm has ticked to the east. Uh, which would have landfall of a high Category 1 hurricane, Sally, with sustained winds between 85 and 90 miles an hour hitting Biloxi, Mississippi. That is the latest projections. Uh, things are continuing to change, obviously with the slowing of the storm. That is concerning. Uh, the longer and it stays out in the Gulf of Mexico, the more and higher the likelihood is that uh, it continues to grow in size and scope and severity. But as it currently exists, uh, it is anticipated that it will hit landfall at 2 a.m. Wednesday morning uh, right around Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, the uh, storm surge projections continue to be worrisome uh, with anywhere from five to eight feet overall coast surge. Uh, in Hancock County, that could be greater than nine feet. In Harrison County, uh, that could be greater than six feet. And our current projections are in Jackson County, that storm surge uh, could exceed three feet. Uh, much of the largest storm surge that we are anticipating, and this is not unusual, uh, is in the tributaries uh, that are leading into the Gulf uh, those that, that feed into uh, the Bay of St. Louis, uh, the Biloxi Bay, and of course uh, the Pascagoula River. Uh, so if you live upriver, uh, it is likely that we're going to see significant water uh, situation. Uh, we are continuing to be very concerned about the amount of potential rainfall. Uh, we mentioned yesterday that there was the potential of 15 to 20 inches of rain in a short period of time. Uh, at this point, it is anticipated that we could exceed 20 inches of rainfall on the uh, coastline, particularly in Harrison and Jackson counties. But we could see as much as 15 inches of rain in a very short period of time uh, in Hancock, Pearl River, Stone, most of Harrison, most of Jackson, and most of George County. As it currently is projected, the storm would enter it in Biloxi. It would continue to uh, be projected to uh, shift to the east once it hits landfall and would likely be out of our state um, sometime fairly quickly after hitting landfall. But even so, we are expecting significant amounts of rain, uh, as much as 10 inches or more in Pearl River, Stone, Green, Perry, Forest, and Wayne counties, as much as six plus inches of rain in Lamar, Forrest, Jones, Wayne, Jasper, and Clark, and in, in, in excess of four inches of rain in Marion and Kemper County. So uh, regardless of, of this particular event, we are going to see significant rainfall, which leads to significant water challenges. We do have hurricane warnings, hurricane watches uh, in effect, Hancock, Harrison, Pearl River, and Jackson hurricane warning. Uh, we also have tropical storm warnings and watches in effect in many of those counties that I just mentioned. And so again, uh, while this uh, storm has ticked to the east overnight, uh, it is still anticipated that we are going to bear the brunt of this storm. It is possible that over the next several hours uh, that things will change, and as they do, we will continue to update you, uh, the public. But for now, if you are south of Jackson, and particularly if you are south of Hattiesburg, prepare now. Now is the time to prepare. Continue to monitor the weather, but be prepared 
for the worst case scenario because with this storm slowing from 12 to 8 miles an hour, uh, it could get worse before it gets better. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, I have met this morning with our uh, team. Uh, obviously, we have uh, behind me Director Michelle and General Bowles of MEMA and the National Guard. I'll give both of them the opportunity to give you an update on, uh, on our planning. Uh, just a couple of things that I will mention. Uh, I also met with Dr. Dobbs earlier this morning. Uh, I would just point out that uh, sometime within the next couple of hours, uh, we, will have, we will have staffing at the medical needs shelter in Stone County. Uh, the Department of Health runs that facility. It was built post-Hurricane Katrina. Uh, that's going to provide shelter uh, for those that have special medical conditions. Uh, they do a fantastic job. The Department of Health will do a great job doing that, uh, and I'm very confident of that. I do want to point out there has been some talk uh, on social media and otherwise that the gas stations on the Mississippi Gulf Coast have run out of fuel. Uh, calm down. Um, that is not the case. There are individual gas stations that because of a surge in demand uh, have uh, run out of fuel, but I want you to know that all terminals are currently functioning. Uh, there are refueling tanks that are en route to those uh, uh, fueling stations that are not currently uh, able to get gasoline, but there are plenty of service stations, of gas stations along the Gulf Coast that do have fuel, and those that do not will be refueled in the coming hours. So that is not a, a major risk at this time, uh, but certainly something uh, that we are monitoring. Before I turn it over, uh, to Director Michelle, I do just want to point out uh, that we are reporting 145 new cases of COVID. Planning for uh, a Cat 1 or Cat 2 hurricane is always complicated. Planning for it during 2020 and, and the life of COVID makes it even more challenging. Uh, I did speak with Governor John Bell Edwards a little earlier this morning of the state of Louisiana. Uh, as you all know, we work very closely to help them during Hurricane Laura, and with this storm ticking more and more to the east, um, he offered uh, the same help for us, and we appreciate that. But the most important thing we can learn from uh, the state of Louisiana is the lessons learned from sheltering and things such as that in a very challenging environment of, of COVID. Uh, we know that uh, Tropical Storm Sally is likely to become Hurricane Sally, and that's going to create a challenge. But with respect to COVID-19, we do have 145 new cases reported today. We have, unfortunately, nine new fatalities, but all nine of those new fatalities are, are actually from vital records. And so we have, for the first time in many, many, many months, uh, taken our seven-day average of new cases of COVID below 3,000. Uh, according to the White House, we are no longer in the red zone of COVID-19 in Mississippi, which is a seven-day period of at least 100 cases per 100,000. That is a positive development, but that is because of the efforts of the people of this state. Uh, you have stepped up and you've made a difference. And the only thing I want to point out with respect to the coronavirus is I simply want everyone to understand that now is not the time to let your guard down. Uh, the hurricane is going to be a challenge. We are going to continue to work through it, but we want people to continue to wear your mask. Uh, we want people to continue to socially distance. Uh, we want people to continue to be aware, not only weather aware, but also virus aware. And certainly as I look out of, uh, around this particular room, uh, people are continuing to do that. And for that, I am grateful. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Director Michelle, which will talk to you about sheltering and, and other uh, specifics with respect to what is soon to become Hurricane Sally. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just to point out a few things, just want to talk about the risks that we're looking at here. They really have remained unchanged from yesterday, and that's flash flooding, wind gusts, and tornadoes. Uh, with that type of combination of weather, we can expect a large number of power outages. So uh, individuals need to be prepared for uh, being without power for some time. As you all know, we have exceptional 
uh, line crews here in the state of Mississippi and along the, the southern part of the United States that will do their best to restore power to you as quickly as possible. As this storm has shifted to the east, uh, it has taken some portions uh, of uh, northwest Mississippi uh, somewhat out of this severe weather, but if you are in the southeastern portion of the state, uh, you can expect uh, to experience all of these uh, conditions of flash flooding, wind gusts, and tornadoes. So pay attention to your areas, whether you fall into a hurricane watch warning, uh, whether you fall into the flash flood or storm surge, pay attention and please take action likewise. Talk about sheltering operations. I've gotten a lot of questions about sheltering operations during a COVID environment, and I want to make sure uh, to, to be very clear here. Shelters will be open and available if you need to shelter during the storm. Congress shelters will be open. Um, I will point out, we have messaged throughout this whole hurricane season, uh, we are asking you to avoid shelters if you have other options available to you, to evacuate out of the affected area, uh, to go with a family member, a friend, or move out of the area and get your lodging in some other ways. Uh, if you come to a Congress shelter, you will be required to wear PPE, no questions about it. If you're in a Congress shelter, you will be required to wear PPE, and if a shelter becomes uh, maxed out from the CDC standards and another shelter uh, will be made available to you. Uh, currently, right now, we've got shelters in, uh, available in all of the lower three coastal counties, either on standby or currently already open. Hancock County does have one open now. Uh, Pearl River County will also be opening uh, a shelter, uh, possibly two, later this evening to prepare for evacuees and from their own county. Uh, as the governor has already mentioned, the medical needs shelter will be open and operational uh, today at 3 o'clock uh, in Wiggins uh, for those that would require uh, medical needs. Uh, we are prepared to respond uh, with our assets uh, accordingly. And one final comment to make is that I realize it is frustrating uh, when you hear about a storm coming about and ends up not being quite as severe, but I want to remind everyone, as the governor mentioned, this storm has changed. Even since the update that we had at 5 a.m. this morning, uh, one thing that I've noticed consistent about this storm is that the wind speed projections increase by about five miles an hour every time we get an update. So the potential for this hurricane to make landfall in Mississippi at greater as a Cat 1 does still exist. So please be mindful and take actions accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Director Michelle. At this time, I'm going to ask General Bowles to give us an update, and then we'll do questions. This morning, the National Guard briefed the uh, governor that uh, we have our engineering assets in place, uh, we have our aviation uh, assets in place, and we have security assets in place, which would be MPs and other soldiers. Uh, what's a little bit different about this storm is that we've postured some uh, responsiveness at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. Uh, yesterday, we were thinking we might uh, be able to pivot down 59, but this also gives us the ability to pivot down Highway 98 or Highway 49 if needed. Uh, in addition to that, we still have our assets on the coast to respond to any coastal needs. Uh, with that said, we've reached out to our neighboring states. They've reached out to us with the National Guard support, so we've got plenty of National Guard support available. And um, at this point, Governor, um, we also are able to support the COVID response without any change in our support there. That's all I have. Thank you. With that, I'll again thank you all for being here and open it up to questions, and I'll start with Scott. Governor, you said you want, uh, Director Michelle said, that they want people to wear their masks and continue social distancing. The executive order is about to expire. Are you going to extend that in light of to want everybody to keep doing it? Yeah, so we actually extended the executive order. I signed it late yesterday afternoon. Um, the executive order is, con is extended until the end of this month in terms of the uh, statewide mask mandate. Uh, the, we did make several changes to the EO. Uh, we made the decision to allow, for example, restaurants to increase their capacity limitations from what was 50 percent to 75 percent. We allowed restaurants to increase their um, total size of an individual party, which was limited to six. It is now limited to 10, uh, where, at, where, they can, where those restaurants are a, a, have the ability to have their tables spaced out by six feet. Um, in addition to that, 
Uh, we also allowed uh, other private sector entities like retail operations as well as uh, gyms to increase their capacity limitations from what was 50 percent to 70 percent. Uh, we have had a tremendous move towards progress in our state uh, since we reached our peak on June the 26th. We had a seven-day moving average of 1,381 cases per day, seven-day average, on June the 26th. Uh, today, that number is approximately 412, so over a 65 percent decline in our daily seven-day average, our weekly seven-day average. Uh, but we're not done yet. Uh, today's number of cases is slightly over 140, was the lowest number of cases we've had uh, in, in recent memory. Uh, and so we are seeing tremendous progress. And by the way, I want to point out that we were able to do that at a time when we reopened K-12 through public schools, at a time when we reopened our community colleges, at a time when we reopened our institutions of higher learning, at a time when the vast majority of private sector entities, while they may have had limited restrictions on them, they were operational. They were functional. Our economy is functioning. But yet, because of the efforts of the people of this state, we are making progress not only from an economic standpoint, but also from the standpoint of reducing uh, the, the amount of virus that is in our local communities. And so uh, we did extend the executive order until the end of the month, uh, but we did loosen restrictions considerably on private sector entities. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, but I could not hear you. Rhonda Weiger filling in for David Elliott. Um, Governor, obviously the numbers on the coast are very concerning. We are expecting a lot of water in this area, potential flooding. With that in mind, are, is it likely that we're going to have any more evacuations on the coast, mandatory evacuations, and opening more shelters so that people can get out? Yeah, well, thank you for, for that question, and um, Greg and I had a conversation about that. I know he's been speaking with the local emergency managers. I know that we've seen mandatory evacuations in Hancock County in low-lying areas already. I'm going to ask Greg to come up and give you an, an update uh, on the, the absolute latest information with respect to not only that, but also shelters, because I, I know that he has that information. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so Harrison County, uh, we, I know that they have planned to uh, initiate some evacuations. Uh, I'm not certain on the times they were going to put that out. I know that they met yesterday. I spoke not only with uh, the Harrison County Emergency Management Director, but also the sheriff down there. So they're preparing to do that if they need to. With regard to shelters, uh, Harrison County does have three shelters that they are prepared to open if they need to. Those are shelters that are uh, run and supported by uh, the American Red Cross. Uh, Jackson County as well, further uh, east of you there, they also have uh, three shelters. Two of those are planning to be open at 2 o'clock today and one additional one on standby. I do want to take this opportunity to mention our local emergency management officials, uh, particularly in our three coastal counties, Hancock, Harrison, and Jackson. Uh, they are just the, the best in, in the business. They're fantastic. They know what they're doing. Uh, we are here to work with them, uh, and I just want to thank them for their efforts. Uh, just so you know, it is my expectation that Director Michelle will be headed to the coast sometime later today, uh, and I intend to continue to monitor this storm uh, from our EOC here in, in the metro area. Towards Mississippi, in case people need to evacuate. And also, on a question for General Boyles, how many guards that have been activated or put into service for the storm? Should it become necessary, we will ensure that more shelters are open. Uh, if you'll remember, and this is the this is the the challenge with this particular storm. I guess there are a challenge with every storm. But yesterday, uh, we projected, based upon the best information that we had at the time, that this storm would enter uh, the uh, would hit landfall. Uh, around Port Sulphur, Louisiana, and they would enter the state of Mississippi 
around Columbia. Well, today, and by the way, this is uh, the 10 o'clock briefing, so this is the most up-to-date information that we have, which was slightly different than what we got at 5 a.m. this morning, um, which was a little bit surprising that it changed as much as it did between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. But now we're expecting this, the eye of the storm to enter around Biloxi, Mississippi, and actually exit the state around Loosedale or somewhere in North George County. Uh, obviously, if that is in fact what occurs, uh, the, the southwest portion of our state will still get rainfall, but the impact is going to be significantly different than what we anticipated just 18 hours ago. So while I don't know of any um, shelters that will be open in other parts of the state at this time, we'll put that data out and that information out as it becomes available. Uh, should it become necessary, I can assure you that we will definitely do that. Um, I'm going to let General Bowles answer that question regarding his act. So the Guard has about uh, 60 people currently that we will put on orders today. That's uh, six composite teams of 10 members each. Uh, we also have two engineer battalions who we've notified to be available. We have an MP battalion uh, that we've notified to be available. Again, our aviation assets are also available for that. And I just happen to have about 500 men and women training at Camp Shelby currently who uh, if we had to pull them off training and put them on hurricane duty, we could do that. So I've got a number of folks on orders already so that we could respond within uh, 24 hours if necessary, Scott. So thank you. Thank you, General Walls. The six composite teams are those uh, 10 member teams are uh, really focused on search and rescue. And so should that become necessary? Now, we're, we're, we're fortunate as a state in that uh, there are a great deal of assets on the Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, that are uh, capable of search and rescue, everything from the Department of Marine Resources to our wildlife, fisheries, and parks teams, uh, as well as local law enforcement teams have search and rescue. But uh, we're going to make sure that whatever assets are needed to help the people of Mississippi, we will make them available uh, without question. Any other questions? Just to give you an idea on um, the next update, it, it all depends on what the storm does. Uh, when it becomes necessary to uh, provide additional information to the people of the state, we will do so. Um, it, it will not happen in the next three to four to five hours, I wouldn't think, but if anything uh, comes up, we'll definitely do that. We are not going to have our 2.30 uh, coronavirus briefing today uh, for obvious reasons. We're focused on uh, this hurricane situation, but we will, uh, we will start doing that again once the hurricane leaves Mississippi. Um, and so with that, uh, thank you all very much for being here, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you all.